So many left stuff here. Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, Falmouth Baptist Church's devotional gatherings this week. Uh, we are glad that you're joining us. Let's have a, a word of prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you so much for the many blessings that you've given to us. We thank you for this Easter season as we reflect upon the love of God for us. Thank you for giving your one and only Son that we could have forgiveness of sins and, and a brand new life through faith in Jesus Christ, the forever life. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the many blessings we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, be with us uh, throughout the week as we gather together, as we look and re reflect upon uh, Easter week. And we pray for your spirit to minister to our hearts and, uh, and be a blessing, that we might be a blessing to one another. We pray it all in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to share with you a couple of announcements of the church before we get started. I want to uh, uh, remind everybody we are gathering together Monday through Friday for the Holy Week devotional gatherings. We'll be gathering at noon and wrapping up at 1 o'clock. If you'd like to join us, you're welcome to do that. And uh, it is kind of a bring your own lunch, pack your own lunch. We won't be providing uh, the things that we normally would provide, the, the drinks and the refreshments and whatnot. Uh, but you're welcome to bring yours and come and to uh, share in that time together. We want to remind you that uh, Friday evening is our Tenebrae service, and that's at uh, 7 o'clock on Friday evening as we remember uh, the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will be, get, uh, we will be uh, celebrating communion Friday evening as well, and so uh, just a reminder for you to, to join us there. And then Sunday morning, uh, bright and early, 6.30 a.m., we'll be gathering together at Surf Drive Beach for the sunrise service, the Easter sunrise service. And we hope you can join us uh, Easter Sunday morning. And then uh, a number of uh, church friends and family members will be, uh, you know, going different places and doing uh, breakfast together or whatever they'll be doing in between the services. And we gather back here at 8.30 in the morning for our regular Sunday morning worship service and our, our uh, Easter morning uh, celebration back here at the church. Um, there are other things to, to, to know that uh, going on in the church family, I'll just point you to the church calendar uh, for, for those events uh, as well. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Deacon Dave Robbins. Deacon Dave Robbins is gonna be our speaker today uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll hear from the scriptures with Dave. Would you, uh, would you welcome Dave Robbins? Is this me? Yeah, that's you. You know, those blue masks that everybody claims them, that's why you can get your own. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Hey, uh, yesterday morning I was all prepared to give a message and I came to church and I was all set and feeling, you know, hey, I'd work on it for a week. And then Pastor John said, you have to use the Bible. I said, oh no, now he tells me. <laughs> I had a devotional on Tim Tim Tebow from you know, Sports <laughs> Illustrated I was going to use. But, so, you know, I had to run, run home and rewrite the message. You know, I went to the Bible and found Timothy in there, but he didn't play football, so I couldn't use him either. So, you know, <laughs> I ended up turning around and decided I'd, you know, go out and buy a new T-shirt. I had a Tim Tebow T-shirt. I was all set. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I want to share with you today um, the hymn... Uh, that we sing quite often. The hymn is Jesus Paid It All. Um, and we sing that Jesus Paid It All, but I'm not gonna sing today, okay? Bob, Bob asked me not to, so. And Lori's applauding <laughs> now for those of you who can't see. But, um, but we sing Jesus Paid It All, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus, the Lamb of God, died on the cross to pay for our sins. Why was that? Well, because God, the Father, loved us so much, and he wanted us to live with him forever in eternity in heaven. But our sin nature prevented us from being able to do just that. There's no place in heaven for sin. In Romans 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. No sacrifice was sufficient, so Jesus had to pay that price. Our sins needed to be paid for. He went to the cross for us. In Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Rome, we, read, we find in Romans 5.6-8, it says, You see, 
At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. That's us people, we're the ungodly. Amen. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though a good man, someone might possibly dare die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God lavished on us his grace in spite of our undesirable character. We were neither righteous nor good, but sinners when Christ died for us. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the payment. After all, we sing all to him I owe. And actually we should say all to him we owe because we're all sinners. We all owe Christ for what he did on the cross for each one of us. Um, so I have a question for you. Would anyone here or at home think or wish they could have changed places with Jesus? To be flogged, spit on, ridiculed, pierced in his side by a sword and nailed to a cross. Any, any takers here? It's not my idea of fun. Not a good idea. I don't think I'd want to do it. Um, but even, when, even if we did, would that would not have been for any value because Jesus was the only sinless person. He's the only one who could pay for our sins. And he did that on the cross. He paid the ransom that was necessary to cleanse us. Even Jesus, in uh, Luke 22, 42, we read, it says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, be, but yours be done. Praise God, he had a better plan. In reflection, think about Jesus as he faced the trials of pain, separation from us, from, from his Father and the humility and despair that he faced, just as we face in our lives. But God's plan, his perfect plan, was completed, and death and sin were defeated by the cleansing of our sins through the blood of Jesus, which washed us as white as snow. Wow, so now let's go back again to the payment plan. When you borrow money from someone, you have a pretty good idea of what you owe and you know, what you've got to pay back. Okay. Um, Monetary, we're speaking, hopefully you pay it back in full. But when someone does a favor, it becomes a little different as far as payback. You know, sometimes, you, you know, when you come to pay somebody back, you can't pay them back as fully for what they've done for you, but you want to try to give back something. You want to show appreciation for the efforts and what they've done for you. Um, so you try to pay that back. Um, his, his gift of salvation some say it was a free gift because he did, we, um, he did it, and it didn't, or he, because it did not cost us anything, but it did cost Jesus. Its value can never be matched. So how should we repay him? Or should we repay him? Do we want to repay Jesus for what he did for us? I don't believe Jesus ever thought about pay, payback, but that doesn't mean we should just let his sacrifice go unrewarded. I believe we can start by becoming his hands, feet, and voice. Just as Jesus was sent to share the good news, so should we be willing. In the Gospel of John, at least 17 times the word send or sent was used. Um, and probably more, but I, I mark and count them, but that's as many as I could find. It was a repeating theme in the Gospel of John. In John 6, 38, it says, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. In John 17, 4, it says, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. When Jesus said it is finished, he was, taking, he was talking about the payment for our sins, but there is still work to be done. Are you willing? There's many people that I've heard say that, you know, they're not, they can't share the gospel, they don't know how to do it, that they feel inadequate, and we'll leave it to the, to the preachers and the pastors to do stuff you know I'm, just, I'm nobody who am I? I I can't you know what am I going to do how can I be used by God um, and, and they they don't do anything they relinquish that they just turn turn away and say well you know this is what I'm going to do um, in uh, in uh, second in Corinthians 2 1 Corinthians 2 4 and 5 uh, we read my message 
and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the spirit, Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on man's wisdom, but on God's power. Paul's point is that unless the Holy Spirit works in a listener, in a listener's heart, the wisdom and elegance of a preacher are ineffective. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit saves, but we have a part in it. You see, first they have to have heard. We can be the voice. So now I want to share a little bit with you about, uh, I've kind of put on my missions hat since I'm chairman of the missions Karina. I want to share a little bit about some of the times that ordinary people made a difference. Uh, this, this particular time we were in Matt and Kay. Now if you remember in Matt and Kay, we went there the first time. There was only one, one uh, Christian in the entire camp, and that was the, lead, the head uh, leader of the camp. Um, and so we left there, and, and our, our missionary uh, commander, Mansur started staying there and going back and ended up setting up ministry in, in Matt and Kay. On one of our visits there, we had helped build a church there. We went to dedicate, be there for part of the dedication of the church. And while waiting, we were supposed to get a van or get on a boat and go downstream and share the gospel somewhere. And to our disappointment and dismay, God's plan that it never happened. The van didn't show up. And we waited and we waited. We didn't know what to do. Well, Dana took a tennis ball and threw it to a little boy across this field or yard and he was kind of hesitant at first. And, you know, she didn't make it all the way across, so she was like, oh, I've got to go get this ball. And she started to walk across the field to get the ball. And the little boy goes, no, no, don't do that. Snakes. So he went and got the ball. And then brought it back to Damon. Well, Dana gave him the ball, and then he started to talk to this little, this young man. And um, lo and behold, he decided to run off into the village and bring some other kids back to meet us. And, you know, we kind of break, broke the ice and became friends with them. We ended up literally having a VBS in the front porch of Karina's uh, home. Under our, we didn't have a plan, we had no idea, but we did games, we did crafts, we sang songs, we, we shared the gospel. It ended up becoming a VBS, it was a God thing. And it wasn't something, I mean, an ordinary, Tennis ball, just throwing a little simple thing, but sharing the love and being there to love on the kids and being there for the kids and the willingness to be a part of God's plan, even though we didn't know what that plan was. <laughs> we had no idea. But praise God for that. But that was that was really just a God moment. That really the whole thing came together and it wasn't us, trust us. And it was all because of Dana throwing yeah. a tennis ball. <laughs> yeah, simple little, you know, tennis ball. Do you remember Mike Borden? Yeah. Uh, told, would share the gospel with one kid and then tell that kid he had to tell the next kid. Yeah, yeah. And that's when they would get their reward or their toy or their craft yeah. or whatever. And, and the little boy, the first boy that came, he yeah. became the ambassador. He ran yeah. throughout the whole village telling all the, all the, all the community, telling the kids to come and come and come. Mm -hmm. He was bringing his friends and everybody right. they were coming. So we'd have to go over it again <laughs> and do it again and do it again. Finally, the band did show up and we did get to go to the dedication, but you know, again, it was all in God's time, mm -hmm. not us. Um, and if you remember, during that dedication, at the end of that dedication, I believe that we had probably around 30 people get baptized that day. 30 to 50. It 30 to 50 lot. people, you and Napoleon and I, brought down to the riverside and baptized that day. Um, it was just a, it was an awesome day. And the guy was, God's calling it. And I don't think we had the baptism planned either, to really do it. That was just a... Uh, yeah, not us. <laughs> not us. We no, no, we didn't. All right, so again, ordinary people and how God can, can use us. You know, we, we need to understand that. You know, Jesus can be repaid by that way, by us being willing. Um, and again, now I want to share February 2014. Um, in Sierra Leone, in Regent, on the mountainside, we walked a mountain and sharing the gospel with thousands, I believe thousands of people. Yeah through the village, through the streets, up into the mountain hills. Boy, that's where the feet come in, tell me, I'll tell you. Climbing those mountains and being used. Sharing the gospel and, and talking with people and, and just having a, um, over the mountainside, you could see a team over here and a team over there and a team up there. And you knew that they're all just sharing the gospel and, and telling people about Jesus. And um, sadly, 
about a year later on this mountainside. In the morning, this gentleman shared this with me when I was there this last time. He came out onto the balcony because he heard a loud bang, and he thought a plane had crashed in the mountainside. And he came out on the balcony, and he looked, and he couldn't see anything. He turned to walk away, and all of a sudden, he heard another loud explosion, and the mountain literally blew up, it exploded. The whole mountainside came down, came forward, and moved. Um, I think there's a slide that shows the mountainside. That's the mountainside. That mountain is probably a mile more this way because it's filled in. Right. It just came down. Houses were, were packed in there. Where that uh, tractor is or that piece of equipment there, um, and I don't think we can get it. The boulder size that came down, actually, I had it one time and I enlarged it. You see the boulder. But that was a church. There was a church there. They were holding a vigil that night. And the pastor and his entire family were lost. Um, and over on the other side of the schools. But, there, there, were, there was the force of the hill slide was so intense that it burned bodies unrecognizable. They carried people out. There, was, there were many people injured and many died. Many of them are home with Jesus because of the efforts of ordinary people sharing the gospel on that mountain. It wasn't a wasted trip or a wasted time. God had, and he knew. People were willing to go and to share. Ordinary people can make a difference. We need to be that difference. We need to be the voice and the hands and the feet of Jesus. That's how we can repay Jesus. Well, he didn't die on the cross in vain. He died for us. And we want to make we want to do all that we can to show how much we love him by repaying him in whatever manner we can. We can choose just to take the gift of salvation, which was brought, bought for us by the death of Jesus on the cross, by, shedding, by the shedding of his blood in order to wash away our sins, and do nothing in return. But we can try to repay him by, by continuing the work of telling his, of his sacrifice on the cross and the hope of eternal life bought and paid for in full by Jesus. Although our salvation was a free gift, it comes with a high price, but Jesus paid that price. Jesus paid it all, all in my own. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we have been able to recognize what your son did for each one of us on the cross. And Father, give us the willingness and the voice and the feet and the hands to continue his work so that others will know the goodness of your son and all that he did. He did it for each one of us. There's nothing we deserve. We didn't deserve any of it. But because of the love that you have for each one of us and because of his obedience to your call, he paid the ultimate price on the cross. His blood washed us as clean as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. David for sharing with us uh, today. Uh, every day this week we'll be hearing another devotional uh, at this time. We gather at the church at 12 uh, and then at 12.15 uh, we go live with the devotional. Uh, we do have uh, another thing that's also called devotional. It gets confusing every Easter season and that is that we have a devotional that you can read online. If you go to falmouth.church uh, you can click there for devotionals. You can receive the email uh, by uh, emailing us at uh, amenfbc at gmail.com and we'll put you on the email list to get those links and the links for all of those things are online as well. Uh, we want to remind you that all during this week we have the devotionals, Friday night the Tenebrae service, Sunday morning 6.30 the sunrise service and then 8.30 for our regular service. We'd love to have you join us and to invite others to be with you. Uh, thanks again for Dave uh, sharing with us today. We appreciate that so much. God bless you. You have a good day. And uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.